Okay, I got my stopwatch set so I don't go too long. Hello, it's Mac and I'm trying something a little bit different today. Uh, today I wanted to make a video, video that's just me looking at you and talking about something that's uh, been on my mind lately. So the topic of this video is uh, about shyness, being a shy person and working as a producer in the video game industry. So you may be surprised by this because I'm, I've am i been making YouTube videos for many years and I've been streaming for a few years now and I'm kind of out there uh, on camera acting like a goof sometimes. You may think to yourself, well, uh, Mac doesn't really seem like a shy person, but the, the truth of the matter is I've always been a shy person. I've always been somewhat socially awkward. Uh, not somewhat, but I have been very socially awkward uh, in the past, and I still am. And uh, what uh, has been kind of surprising over the last few years is that I found myself in a role professionally where I have to uh, communicate with people constantly and uh, be out there running meetings, um, coordinating between people and teams. And I never imagined that uh, someone like me would be in the position to, to work uh, in this capacity. So I guess part of the point of me making this video is to share what it's like from a sh one shy person to another, whoever whoever you are out there watching now, uh, you're you're shy, you're introverted, socially awkward, and uh, perhaps you're looking at a career change or looking to uh, push yourself further in your own career, make make a change, perhaps, uh, in what you're doing now. Uh, perhaps you're an individual contributor, and you've just been working by yourself primarily are just working with small groups of people and you want to move up or move into a role that involves, I guess, how should I say this? Uh, uh, that requires qualities that you naturally, uh, you may not have or you think you don't have. <sighs> so that is a long way of saying uh, it is possible for, uh, I guess, a shy person to be uh, a producer, which is to say, like to do something um, in the workplace that involves standing up in front of people and, uh, you know, doing things that you w would not normally associate a shy person doing. My goodness, this is not going well. This is unscripted, by the way, if you couldn't tell. So, um, yeah, yeah. So you may be wondering to yourself, well, what's so special about uh, being a, a shy person and uh, working as a producer in, in video games. Well, probably not that much, really. Uh, for myself, I always thought of maybe we could just start from uh, square one and talk about what a producer does because uh, I think there's sometimes some misunderstanding or the role itself is so broad that uh, you you can really have many different flavors uh, producers and uh, in all honesty when people ask me uh, what a producer is in video games you can have as many different types of producers that you have as you have different types of people and personality types uh, that's what it really comes down to uh, producers are managers they're coordinators they're facilitators they're leaders uh, producers typically you don't actually do any work hands-on, don't do any work on the project that has to do with building it. So they don't write code, uh, they don't uh, make art, they don't uh, do designs, they don't build levels, um, they don't do any of that. So, you know, some some do, but by and large, producers are uh, the planners in the organization, and uh, they make decisions. And uh, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. They're in they're in the enviable or not enviable position of having to make sometimes very important decisions, and they have to uh, gather up the right people to do a particular job, and then they have to focus that energy. They have to get a bunch of smart people together, and then focus all the smart people energy towards achieving a goal. Right. So that's what the leaders tend to do. 
and producers are essentially like you usually get like a cadre of uh, producers, a production team on on any given uh, at any game studio, and they're the ones who organize schedules. They uh, uh, organize schedules. They uh, figure out budgets. They uh, they figure out roadmaps. And uh, oftentimes, you know, as a, as a consumer, uh, someone who may not be working in the industry, and then you're just a consumer or a hobbyist, uh, you of, often see producers as the uh, face of a of a product or or a company. So they'll be doing interviews as well. They'll be standing on stage at like events like E3, and they'll present things as well. So yeah, producers are are out there, and you tip, you typically associate, or I have always associated producers as very being very extroverted, gregarious, uh, talky. They're talkers, you know? People who are good good communicators, are very outgoing, and are very um, well-spoken. All these things that I've never, I've never considered myself to be, ever. And uh, it wasn't until like a few years ago where I was working, I was working in live operations at, at, at my uh, company. And then uh, the project I was working on uh, wasn't uh, turning out great. It was actually being uh, sunset after only a very short amount of time uh, after release. And so um, the company was uh, looking to, you know, disband the team and kind of reabsorb them and in, back into the other uh, projects, the other active projects that being worked on. So uh, lucky for me, I, I had an old... Uh, a former colleague from a team I used to be on uh, reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be leaving the this, this studio soon and we need somebody to take my place. Would you be interested? And she was a producer. Um, and she thought of me, which is great. Uh, previously, I had uh, tried my hand at being a, a project manager or, or a development director, as they're sometimes called in, uh, in, in games. I ended up not liking it too much. Uh, uh, being a project manager, and um, I kind of gave up on that, on that ambition, and went back to my uh, my live operations role at the time, which is a very specialized uh, role. I won't get into too much detail about it, but you know, I had a I had my own little niche in my company, which felt great. But then I was pretty much stagnating for for a few years since I've been working that same role for six seven years now uh let's say like I, it was like five years at the time i had been working at five years straight so it was uh it was an opportunity for me to uh challenge myself and to uh spread my wings you know <laughs> and grow as a person but you know to be honest i was i was uh terrified at the time well not terrified but extremely uh anxious uh about the new um the new role and so uh, when I began, I eased into things very slowly, and uh, and uh, the first year was definitely a very uh, quite bumpy and quite uh, frenetic, as I was just like learning the ropes of how to do the job, just like just the bare basics, but also having to run a lot more meetings. I think that's the that's the big thing uh, when when you when you step into a production role. And you're you're, you're you're a more introverted person, and then you you realize you have to be the host of so many meetings. Uh, whereas in the past, I would attend you know a fair number of meetings, but I was just a participant, and so uh, oftentimes I could just be in the passenger seat, uh, listening or watching a presentation, just listening to whoever was running the meeting, and I might be called upon to to answer some questions or to speak about something and that just be a, you know, I just speak up, say my piece and that was it for me. I wasn't required to structure things where it's like, okay, here's, here's the agenda. Here are all the points we had to cover. And then, uh, and then actually actively listen to people and actively probe with questions because the purpose of most meetings supposedly is to uh, <laughs> tackle problem as a group and to, figure out solutions, and if you can't figure things out in that meeting, oftentimes you don't figure out things in the meeting, you have to have some um, next steps. It's like, oh, we're at the end of the meeting, so what do we do next? And then how do we follow up on that stuff? So um, as a producer, 
or as a project manager, you have to be the one in the driver's seat running everything. And uh, that was not something I was used to at all. And uh, I just want to um, say that, yeah, I'm already at 10 minutes here. And I've uh, barely gone into the real meat of the discussion. Well, what is the real meat of the discussion? Like, how how is it that if if you're if you're shy and introverted, first of all, like if you're an introvert, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're shy. Um, you can look up on YouTube, and there'll be a uh, you know you can't swing a dead cat and. Uh, not hit a video about like what what it means to be introvert and why being introvert is so great or this and that. But I just want to uh, maybe clarify that just because you're an introvert doesn't mean that you're a shy person. But I will say, if you're a shy person, then you tend to be introverted and you tend to be socially awkward. You can be an extrovert, very outgoing, and also be kind of socially awkward, I, I would say. But I think as a baseline, as sort of like the, the root of things, being shy often means you're also socially awkward and introverted. And that's where I fall in. That's my category, I would say. And um, so it's, it's not easy. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Uh, I've definitely, over the last few years, I've definitely had, I don't know if I could call them panic attacks, but I've... I've started, like, I've been in the middle of a long weekend, for example. Like, it's a Saturday. And uh, I have, you know, Sunday and I have Monday off. And I'm just trying to enjoy my weekend. I know that I have some big meeting coming up in the coming week on, say, like, a Thursday. And here I am on a Saturday. And I'll be I'll be thinking about it. It'll, it'll just be in my head. And I'll be worried about what I'm going to say or... Um, how to prepare for it. It'll just be, it'll just be hang over me like a cloud. And I've had more than, more than a, a few weekends like that for sure. Um, I don't know if other types of personalities struggle as much for that sort of thing, especially working in these similar type of roles, these people, people in organizational roles. But yeah, yeah, it hasn't been, it hasn't been easy. But I will say after doing this for like three years now, um, I, I do find that I found some coping mechanisms. Uh, number one is that it helps to work remote or at least work hybrid. So um, it's like a double-edged sword, I think, because I was 100% remote when I started working as a producer. Being behind a webcam and being able to sort of organize a bunch of cheat sheets like not only have an agenda that I would screen share with my team, but also have my own private notes I could refer to. Invaluable in terms of just like keeping my train of thought. If I was like uh, panicking during a meeting or I find, found that there was like dead air, I could always refer to some other notes that kind of keep my brain running and I could always go to the next talking point. Just having some notes in general that you can present and walk everyone through during a meeting is 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 probably the best thing you can do um, in terms of running meeting as a as a shy person, uh, running meetings as a shy person. Um, other coping me mechanisms I've had were to just. It sounds weird. It sounds obvious, but to just focus on um, the end results, focus on your goals, focus on your tasks, and just completing your tasks right. And the, I found that the more I focused, be more results oriented in um, my day-to-day -day tasks, uh, any sort of anxieties or, or self-doubts would, would kind of recede into the background more. And I wouldn't fixate on them as much. And that makes sense, doesn't it? It's one of those obvious things of like, well, if you're feeling nervous, just stop feeling nervous. There's more of like a distraction technique. If you're worried about how you're going to come across or how you're going to uh, worry about appearing stupid or just, just put that aside, just focus on how you're going to get task A done, how you're going to 
focus on getting task B done and, and onwards down the line. And I found that the more I focused on being results oriented, just focusing on doing the work, uh, everything else kind of fell into place. And in meetings, instead of being self-conscious about uh, appearing stupid or asking too many questions or asking the wrong questions because I was focused on how do I understand the problem and get the answers I need in order to to, to get things moving forward uh, I, the way I would conduct myself would reflect that if you know what I mean it's kind of hard to explain in great detail since I'm on the clock here I don't want to make a huge long video um, but I can always make a follow-up video if there are any questions about that. And I think the final bit of coping that I want to mention in this video before it gets way too long is to, um, <sighs> what was it? So my first thing was to, uh, have uh, good meeting notes. And so they have talking points from you and have your own private notes to refer to. Now, if you're in person, if you're in the office a lot and you're running meetings in person, that may not be as, as helpful. But I will say, and this is more like of hindsight, if I was in the office three to five days a week and I was running meetings a lot more often in person, I think I would get over my um, inhibitions and fears a lot faster. It would be a real sink and swim situation. I thought it was a sink and or swim situation when I was being a producer remotely. If I was in the office, I think that would be amplified tenfold. And so, um, yeah. In a sense, it almost helps if you're going to be in, in the office more. Because you're just going to be uh, forced into the, the uncomfortable situations. Uh, much more often, and it's going to be more, well, literally in your face. And I think um, I think the final point I'd like to make is, you know, as a shy person, as someone who's social awkward, I would often, this is like goes back to when I was a kid, you know, as a student and everything. I'd be afraid to ask questions. And again, goes back to like being afraid of like what people would think about me, um, appearing stupid and all that stuff appearing foolish like just whatever it may be um and uh, i would say uh, when you're in a role like a producer or as a manager it is your job to ask questions that's what i learned the hard way if you don't ask questions you don't get the answers right or if you truly do not understand something then people will assume you understand and then you the time will as more time goes on people will just assume that you understood everything that's, that's going on. And if you're, you're constantly in a state of like not understanding, it's just going to stack that, that uh, you just made the problem get worse and worse and worse. Um, so don't be, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and you will find that people are more than happy to, to educate you. And not in a bad way. It's just like people... <laughs> Ask the questions and more, more, nine times out of 10, you'll get the answers you need. Uh, and then if not, then you learn to ask questions better <laughs> or you learn to ask the right questions. It's not asking, it's not, it's not an issue of like asking dumb questions. Over time, you'll learn to ask the right questions. And as you tease answers out of people and you get used to that process, you'll find that it becomes a very powerful tool because to be honest, um, as a producer, as that, as a coordinator of any sort, you're not, you're often not the smartest person in the room, far from it. And you're relying on the smart people to, uh, basically, uh, utilize their expertise to, to, to an end that you've set out for them. So, uh, it's really up to you to, uh, utilize the people on your team to the best, you know, the, to the, to their maximum potential. And you can't do that if you're not uh, digging in to, to what's required, the details of like the work. <sighs> I'm rambling on now, aren't I? Before this becomes a 20-minute video, I'd like to wrap things up by saying thank you for watching. 
and uh, stay tuned for part two, perhaps, of this. But if you have any questions about what it's like to be a producer in video games, drop them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear from anyone. And uh, even if you're not looking to be a producer, but you're, say, an artist or a programmer or in QA, but you're looking to move up. And oftentimes moving up means you're, you're not the guy in the, in, in the salt mines doing the work. You're not the, the guy, <laughs> you're not the guy, you know, screwing the gears into the, you're not, you're not, you're, you're not on the assembly line. You're more in the, the, the planning or management capacity. You want to move into management. You want to become a coordinator. You want to become a project manager, a producer, or any, any you know, you just don't want to be the individual contributor anymore. Uh, feel free to drop any questions in the comments as well. You probably think to yourself, are you serious? Is this guy really a producer? Um, yes. Yes, I am. And uh, if I can make it, by God, so anyone can, anyone can do it. Uh, so yes, that is, if I were to just uh, impart just one message, if, if you see me now, how awkward I am in front of the, in the front of the camera, giving this, uh, giving this speech, if I can, if I can make it as a producer, then you can too. Uh, so yes, thank you for watching. Uh, please like the video if you got something out of it and do, do comment with any questions you may have about, uh, what was discussed today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next gameplay video. That's a, that's a bit more uh, of my, uh, that's a bit more my speed, I would say. Okay, bye.